Welcome back to The Wonderful Life. We're Tim and Deanna. Today we're traveling from Paris to London to spend a day or so prior to our British Isles cruise. We haven't made any concrete plans for our time in London, so it should get pretty interesting. Well, we've got a train to catch, so let's go. We arrived at Paris's Gare du Nord train station, and after passing through security and customs, we found our way to our train platform for our Eurostar train into London's St. Pancras station. We settled into the seats we'd reserved months prior and began our 75-minute trip across France, under the English Channel, and into London. So we've arrived in London now, and we are on our way into the station where we will decide whether we're going to take a cab, a bus, or what have you. The train ride from Paris was so comfortable and convenient. Now we just had to make our way out of the station to call an Uber to our hotel across town in the Blackfriars neighborhood. Starbucks. Do you think they have a special mug? They might. They might just do it now. I guess. Our Uber arrived pretty promptly, and before we knew it, we were on our way south across London to our hotel in the Blackfriars neighborhood. Officially in London, uh, checked into our Ibis Hotel, Ubered from the train station to the hotel, and now we are walking. I don't know, probably to go find some lunch. But yeah, this is unexpected weather for uh, London. We have a lot of rain apparel with us. <laughs> yeah, we were and definitely expecting rain today. We had to leave yeah, our coats this is at the hotel. Very summery. Mm -hmm. On our way to finding lunch, we headed west along Fleet Street towards Temple Church. Fun fact, Fleet Street is the home of fictional murderer Sweeney Todd. everyone so we are now rocking back towards the river we did a little city walk and saw some historic buildings and our um our hotel is a little bit off the beaten path so we're trying to navigate where we are and where we're going trying to find a pub that's open have some lunch and figure out the rest of our day yep, and a kind of a quiet historic looking courtyard yeah. here which is um kind of looks like a movie set yeah it does <sighs> There's like no one else on this street. Um, Can't figure out where we are, but we'll but figure we'd update when it was a quiet or spot, yes. no traffic, and it's certainly not that here. Um, I'll turn the camera around and we'll approach the Thames. The river. Yeah. Okay, so. We're here in Essex Street, it looks like. Yep, in the city of Westminster. Westminster. It's a little staircase down towards the river.
Now there are phone booths are everywhere. The driving on the opposite side of the road is a little freaky, I'll be honest. It's our first time seeing that. Uh, just a little garden alongside well, the river. I'll just take you on a walk through that. All the lilacs are finishing blooming. You can still smell them though. Yep. It's a statue of someone. Oh, look at that. Uh -huh. It's just like the statue we have it in. Is. And Lincoln Park. Yes, it's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, we've got a statue like this right in our neighborhood back in Chicago. It's even a palm tree up there. I don't know. I didn't expect to see palm trees in, in London, but there's Big ben. they exist. Yep, there's a big clock. The eye. So at least we know we're heading in the right direction. Uh huh. <laughs> There's a the underground, and there is the river straight ahead. We'll cross and find a place to dine. Very dramatic. On our walk along the Thames, we happened upon a boat with a bar and restaurant on top with views of the London Eye and Big Ben. After lunch, we headed back across the river to do some sightseeing along the southern bank on our way back to our hotel. Hey everyone. We are currently walking on the London Bridge. Anyway, we have a beautiful view of the Tower Bridge which is what, it's more a little, I guess it's iconic looking, um, but we're gonna go to the other side of this bridge and take some fantastic pictures, hopefully with the sun setting in the background. Ah. Yeah, so we walked along the river from uh, Blackfriars where our hotel is located. A ton of really nice looking little pubs and eateries yeah. and things along the way. Uh, the Shakespeare's Globe Theater was Very down cool. there. Uh, the Tate Modern, which is a free uh, modern art museum here in the city. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we figured we were rested up enough. We took a little break after lunch. We totally needed to kind of like lay down for a little bit. I even took a little, like a 15 minute nap, I think. Um, we showered and got ready and now we're out and about. Um, it's a very young and hip area yeah. more than I expected when you think London growing up you picture a bunch of you know gray-haired people but no <laughs> it's just pretty crazy this is why you didn't want to come here because that's what you pictured <laughs> I'm not growing up um, but yeah there's a the this bridge London Bridge is not all that attractive it's no. very ordinary it's not like the London Bridge is falling down child's song and all that it's just um, architecturally it's very basic yeah but underneath it is really unique. There's a, a, a German restaurant beneath it. There's um, a few other pubs and pizzerias yeah. and things. It's, it's really cool. And some of the pubs are like from the 1700s down there, which we weren't anticipating a lot of activity on our side of the river. I don't know why, but it's probably way more <laughs> busy than, than the other side. Which right. is where everything else is. I'll switch over to the other side of the bridge and talk to you in a bit. Yep. So, in the distance there, I'll, I'll probably have to enlarge this a little. Uh, we're a few hundred yards away, but there's the Tower Bridge. And then they have what looks like an antique kind of uh, battleship out there in the river as well. But if I turn further to the right you'll see a, a fairly modern building that's known as the Shard which is up there in the distance. I'm not certain what it includes but it's, it's one of the places listed on all the tourist mm -hmm. books and such. They, um, the, I, I've actually been very impressed with the architecture here in London. Um, 
many of you maybe already know this, but I don't know. There, there's some really cool looking buildings. Coming from Chicago, being a huge architecture city, um, this is just as impressive to me. Now we've come upon the old battleship here in the river. It's called the HMS Belfast. There's a gangplanky thing that leads to it, so I think they probably do tours and such. There's even a little bar right here along the shoreline. So yeah, here's the little list of things you can do on the HMS Belfast. They've got four, oh, like a four top decks, five lower decks, and they take you on a little trip through the what was an old, looks like World War II battleship. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are that much closer now. We can see the tower bridge very clearly. See the little double-decker buses all over the city, just as I expected. They do have tours that go up into the tower. Um, you have to reserve that well in advance, which obviously we haven't. And I think it closes very early at like 6 o'clock. <laughs> we are now right up to the Tower Bridge. Yep. <laughs> um, it's super crowded here. This is a very popular spot. So, uh, everybody's Excessively sitting crowded. on the There's lawn. There's a ton and of families and couples and... Well, a lot of photographs being taken of the scenery. There's a lot of statuary around here that kids can play on or around. Uh, but yeah, well, it's probably as close as I need to get. And then we're going to go look for a yeah. place quaint to have dinner. I'm not quite sure about quaint. We'll have to figure this out. There's a lot of modern restaurants close by too. Like I've seen a few, a couple of Italian restaurants. So I we had our fish and chips this afternoon. Not doing that again. I need something kind of comforting like I don't know a pie of some kind I think not maybe a, a shepherd's pie or a, something I don't know pie or anything like that. <laughs> no not blueberry good morning guys so um, yesterday let's kind of finish where we left off um, after we left the Tower Bridge we did find a very quaint Italian restaurant that we went to on our way back to our hotel um, it was called Over O apostrophe V E R. We'll, we'll link either the website or put the address in. It was absolutely amazing. Um, looks like the owners are from Sicily, is what I'm thinking, or Naples or something like that. But it was definitely Southern Italian food, and um, all of their pastas are homemade and they've been rated really, really high, I think, for pizza, even in the world. So. Um, we uh, had wine, we both had uh, pasta, the, the pizza, like I, Deanna said, is supposed to be their highest rated item. Um, but yeah, we just wanted kind of a comfort food thing, yeah. um, get back to the hotel and sleep in. Man, did we sleep. I, I slept, believe it or not, probably better than I did when we were in Paris. Um, it was quiet, It was the room was dark, <laughs> and it made all the difference in the world. Um, feeling very refreshed this morning. Um, got up and got ready and now we decided just to grab a quick coffee at a coffee shop kind of across the street from our hotel. We're actually directly underneath the Southwick train line um, in a little coffee shop called Origins. O-R-I-G-I-O-N-S I think or just Maybe. origin, not origins, plural. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. Thanks, hon. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> um, it's raining or was raining pretty heavily. It kind yeah. of what we expected, so I'm trying out all the, the flat hair <laughs> suggestions I got online with the waterproof pants and the waterproof jacket and and shoes and all that so um, I'm well prepared now to see well, but we were prepared works. because we're going to Ireland too so of course we had to be like that <laughs> um, like wool hat um, yeah so we had a little pastry we're gonna do hopping. some hopping around town seeing some of the sites that are on our bucket list mm -hmm. you know there's not that much time because we we really needed to get some sleep um yeah. all, all the walking we did in paris combined with everything we did yesterday kind of took a toll i don't even know how many miles we walked yesterday we're gonna hop the train and and try and get to at least buckingham, buckingham palace, palace to start things off and then we'll go from there yeah. and we'll talk to you in a bit so see you later bye
Okay, we're off the train and on our way to the palace. I, I guess there's some one-year anniversary of King Charles and Queen Camilla's coronation about to take place. Now we're heading towards the palace itself. It's raining as it usually is here, I suppose. The crowds are still fairly thick, but they were much thicker for that presentation that went on, the performance. I'll switch the camera around so you can see what we're looking at. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So here we are in the front of Buckingham Palace, a big fountain out in the little roadway, and then the crowd's thicken up a bit as we approach the entrance here. He's got a little shed. And yeah. that's kind of what we expected to see, the little guard in this guard shack and all of that. Off in the distance there. Well, we've left the palace now and we are walking through St. James Park. And there's a little pond with... Eventually we're going to head through Westminster and hit Westminster Abbey and the Big Ben. Very serene with the swans and geese. Just gliding across the pond here, St. James Park. And uh, all the church bells are going off to celebrate the same occasion, the coronation or the anniversary of the coronation. So greetings, we are near uh, 
what they call this Westminster yeah, we're neighborhood. Yeah, we're from Westminster Abbey in Big Ben. And we are having our lunch, and I'm having a pint of Guinness, of course, because I've been practicing and for I, months. And I have a Cornish or orchard cherry and blackberry cider, which is very, very good. It even it even has its own special glass, which is funny. But um, I'm having kind of a chicken and leek pie, and yours is called the steak and ale pie. Mm -hmm. Very um, good. Yeah, like well, it's, it's called the Red Lion, and it's apparently very famous. Like this site um, has been around since 1434, but it was originally called Hopping Hall. Um, the pa there, there's a big sign on the wall. It says the tavern passed through various hands, traded. Charles Dickens used to hang out here after it was named the Red Lion. Um, and then apparently a lot of famous visitors come here and the British prime ministers all come here or have come here. So um, this, it's a, a very well-known establishment. Um, pricing is very reasonable. We just kind of walked up and they were able to seat us even though they were very busy but they found a table. Um, no, it's, it's, it's really good and it was exactly what we were looking for for lunch today. Um, yeah, we hit some of the sites in the morning. We're going to try and figure out how to get to Abbey, Abbey Road. That would be a biggie. Um, the, the transportation system is really efficient, really quick, um, easy enough to pick up. Um, just tap your credit card on the reader when you get mm -hmm. there and uh, the gates will open and then you tap it to get back out. Um, Makes it much easier. Um, you don't have to buy a ticket here in London. Um, all you need, you can pay with Apple Pay, you can pay with Google Pay, you can pay with a credit card or a debit card, whatever, all you do is tap it in and tap it out and you're done, which is pretty cool. I mean, I love that system. All right, so we will get back in touch after we get to our next destination. See you soon. Bye. Bye. So um, we ventured on the uh, tube ride again, which is the train underneath all of London. And we got on in Westminster after lunch and made it out to Abbey Road. So we are on our way over there walking right now. A couple minute walk, it's not so far. Um, and we're there, <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Um, there's, we're coming up on the crosswalk where all the photographs were taken and or the album cover. Yeah the Beatles album Abbey Road we'll do a little video of that so back in a bit I'll, I'll have to walk like them we'll have, have to take turns but right. it is a running it's it's a real street so you have to be careful <laughs> We have uh, done our Abbey Road visit. Uh, we did a little walk. We're in Soho Square. Right Actually, now. we took the train, got off at Baker Street, um, saw some Sherlock Holmes stuff, and decided to walk just throughout the neighborhoods. So now we're in Soho Square, and it is mighty cute. Mm -hmm. so it's ridiculously old giant trees and. Uh, yeah. St. Patrick's Church behind yeah. us. And very peaceful. Mm -hmm. They've got a ping pong table in the park. Mm -hmm. Hold on, there's a little bit of birds in a tree. There's uh, pigeons perching in a tree, which we don't get in Chicago. I don't think I've seen that anywhere. And on the ground, of course, and on every park bench. This is like pigeon heaven. I just picture, you know, Mary Poppins sitting here throwing crumbs to these pigeons. So it looks like, according to the little sign, 
Soho Square was initially laid out in the 1860s, so that is how old this area is. For many years, the square was also called King's Square for Charles II. All right, we're going to turn the corner here and start Crazy heading cute. into another yeah. neighborhood. I'll turn the camera around for you. This is what it's called, Greek Street. In the Soho neighborhood, this is Greek Street. I'm sure it's a little quieter today than an ordinary day since it's a bank holiday, which is very unusual. Yeah, there are actually a lot of stores that we've seen closed like after 5 o'clock today, which would have normally been open. It's like a very hip neighborhood. I think Soho, New York. Yeah, well, actually, there yeah. was a little area that looked like Times Square, too. So it's almost mimicky a little bit. <laughs> Lots of clubs and bars and salons. Coming up on a relatively well-known corner up here. This is called the Three Greyhounds up here, which is a you know your typical English pub. Has been here for a ridiculously long time. We shall see that in a moment. Not the person. So this is kind of a, a bit of the West End. You'll see some theaters sprinkled yeah, in a here. Bit, this is on the fringe. Um, so behind us is uh, the theater where Michael Jackson the musical is performed. Crossing over. And then we're getting into the, the, uh, the center of all of the, the theater here. Turn the corner and you'll see the theater where Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is performed. So this whole neighborhood is like Times Square meets Broadway meets Soho, New York. It's all very, very similar. And this building is amazing. Coming up on a theater where well, it's a fairly famous show right now called The Mouse Trap. It's an Agatha Christ or based on an Agatha Christie novel. It's been around for a while. This is the St. Martin's Theater up ahead. Tucked away in kind of a quiet little corner here. That's for sure. Uh, the musical Matilda is performed. Got a little monument to Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands in the center of this circle here. Definitely have to figure that this out. This is a bar that that's been around since the 1800s, 1833. It's called The Crown, which is fairly well known yeah, as well. Very cool. And last minute, uh, Deanna purchased some tickets to her all time favorite musical. Here in the West End, we'll be attending the 7.30 show of Les Miserables at the Sondheim Theater. And I'm so excited. Good morning from London. We are standing on a little pier along the River Thame. Uh, it is our checkout day. We will be heading out to the port in a little bit, but wanted to give you a little bit of a recap of our evening last night. Um, I believe what we were walking from the train, the train from Baker Street. That's where we left off. Went through Soho, um, got to the West End, and. Decided to get last minute theater tickets. Saw my favorite show of all time, Les Miserables. It was beyond what I expected. It was probably one of the best Broadway quality shows I've ever seen. Um, and then some, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I was expecting, but the last version of Les Mis that we saw in Chicago was underwhelming. And this was just out of this world. The, the acting was incredible and uh, 
the singing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of speechless about it. But anyway, then we walked back to the hotel in the rain, <laughs> about two miles, uh, got settled in, ordered a pizza at the hotel, which was, they said Chicago, Chicago style pizza, but that was kind of laughable. Uh, but it was just something that we needed to have because we didn't eat dinner. And um, now we're up and just kind of wandering a little bit, had a quick breakfast and waiting to catch our bus. Um, yeah, we wanted to find a neighborhood breakfast place that um, locals would dine at, so I did a little Google search. And um, a, a local breakfast here is a little different from local breakfast back in the States. Um, very different. Uh, very different. <laughs> um, a lot of French fries on everything. That's, it's a big deal, and they call them chips. So every, just about everything you eat here is, comes with chips. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit like that. In Paris, we had French fries with a lot of our yeah. meals there as well um who'd have thought um and well i think a lot of people already know that hun but okay. we're just this is just new for us and so. co corned beef hash is different here it was served cold and it's almost like the shape of spam when they slice spam. exactly so what i was gonna say that was a little shocking for me it was in a loaf cut and it was not heated i did taste it it didn't taste bad no. But Tim had a look of shock on his face the entire time we were eating breakfast. So. But crazy cheap. I mean, I think we spent 12 pounds for two coffees and two full breakfasts, which is really cheap. Yeah, so um, we were already packed. Um, we're going to head back to the hotel. And then when it gets a little closer, we've got that... Uh, I don't know what you call them. It's the a coach bay, bus. Coach bus uh, down to where we'll catch the cruise ship, but we've got a, a, a hotel book down there for the night. Yeah. We figured it would just be easier to be closer to the cruise port than um, having to stay in London and catch the train mm -hmm. the day of the cruise because the cruise leaves fairly early, like at 3 or 4 p.m. Um, not to say it couldn't have been possible because it's only two hours away, but I don't know. I get a little anxious when it comes down to uh, the travel days and I need to make sure that everything is timely. So it's just easier for us to relax when we get to the hotel, probably grab dinner later. And then I, we may even be able to walk to the port. I'm not positive, but um, we do have to get over to the bus stop, which is over by Buckingham Palace somewhere. We were going to take the train um, but it seems a little complex because you've got to take two trains in order to get to this particular location. So I think we might just Uber cause it's like 12 bucks. So it's pretty easy. So we will possibly update you from the van or the shuttle bus down to, uh, yeah. South, was it? South, Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. So, um, until now, see you in a bit. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please click the like button and subscribe. Come along with us as we head to Southampton, UK and board the Norwegian Star for a 10-day trip around Ireland. And remember, keep living the wonderful life.